Humans of the Cardboard, welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. You guys know I love the new Centurion archetype. I think it has such a strong start to it. Just the initial cards for them seem so, so good. This seems like one of the best control strategies going forward, especially in a pure sense. Now, I know this deck can be messed around with a couple of extra engines. I'm starting pure here with how I'm looking at this deck list because I think there are some key differences uh, between us and the OCG and what we've already kind of seen a little bit of in the OCG. I fully believe that when the next like Road of the King comes out where this deck is legal, it will be one of the better performing decks in the format. I almost expect it to be like a top five performing deck. Uh, unless it's like super, super expensive for some reason for them. But I really think it has really good potential. So this is the list I have today. This is my first initial list that I want to mess around with prior to it ever coming out. I know we're like a ways away, but I feel pretty good about this. This is this is kind of where I land. So uh, we'll run through the list real quick. Uh, I've already been over multiple, multiple videos about what these cards do, what makes them good, all that stuff. So it's not that important, but we will skim through them. We start off here with our main Stratos of the deck, Primera. If you don't know, this deck is all about putting its monsters into the Spell and Trap Zone as continuous traps. Traps is the key word there because they can quick effect special summon themselves out on either player's turn. That's very key, but they can all only be special summoned once per turn. So that's, that's the restriction there. Premier is your shadow, searches on summon, and they can summon itself. Very, very good. Key thing here, this is your tuner, and it's 16-16 defense that'll come up later. Three, three copies of Trudea. This one is also very, very good. Um, it can place itself from the field and any Centurion monster from deck into your spell and trap zone, so it pulls these guys out of the deck, gets them in rotation. Very, very good card as well. Both one-card starters. Then you have your Centurion Emet. Uh, I believe that's six. I believe V1 is, VI is six. Uh, so yeah, just one copy of him. Um, he's not light or dark, so he can't be Bischild. Um, he can be DD Crow though, which is kind of annoying, but he seems like the kind of card where like, it would be like some very specific stuff to remove him and the deck still plays even if he's removed. It's, he is not absolutely crucial, but he is very nice. So I think one is fine. You don't really want to draw him. I think he's perfect as a one of. Move to the field spell. This card is incredible. This is one of the, the centerpiece cards for the deck for sure. Uh, it protects itself uh, from being destroyed. It has a main phase effect that lets you uh, send a card from your hand to the graveyard to place a centurion into your spell and trap zone. So again, pulling your guys out of the deck so they can just summon themselves immediately. Very good. And on either player's turn, when any monster is special summoned, you can quick effect synchro summon uh, using a centurion monster. So it lets you quick synchro on the opponent's turn. That comes up a ton. That's one of the key things of how the deck sets up interruption on the opponent's turn is using this field spell. Very good. Quick play spell. This is maybe the single best engine card in the deck. Uh, this card can do one of two things. It can either place a Centurion straight from the deck into your spell and trap zone, or you can just set any Centurion spell or trap straight from deck. So you can either set the field spell, activate it immediately. We know how uh, center centralizing this field spell is, or you can just go ahead and get one of your monsters to help you extend through interruption at times, stuff like that. Very nice as well. One copy of Faith of Centurion. This is a really good follow-up card. Uh, you like to search this on the opponent's turn. So that way for your turn three, turn four, this allows you to really push into your opponent if they ever pushed into your board decently well. Good card, good one-off, but I don't want to go further in on that. Three Prosperity. Uh, it just feels like this is modern-day Yu-Gi-Oh. This may not be at three by the time this deck comes out for the TCG, but I have it here right now. Um, if your deck can play it, you play it. That's just the if ands or buts. No if ands or buts on this card. It's just maybe the single best card in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh currently. One called. I actually like called in this list. You have so much space. It's actually crazy. Um, you have so much space that like you you can feel you can have like the the flexibility to just play a copy of called because droll can be annoying in certain hands. Ash in a hand where you only have one starter uh, can be very annoying so call just being a, a super flexible card very very nice for the deck helping you be a little more enduring of those those hand traps uh, one copy of truth century and i think this is probably a must in the deck as well um, if you guys don't know any of the one card combos gives you the standard play but if you open any of the two card combos you just do the standard play but then you also end on this counter trap and this is a straight up omni negate it's a very nice addition to whatever your board would have been otherwise, and uh, it just makes it harder. You don't lose to certain 
uh, specific cards like the Cosmics of the world that could be very problematic for this deck. Um, if you don't have a card like this set up turn one to deal with it. So I really want to have something like it, uh, this in the deck as an insurance plan. You also have three copies of Apophis, the Swamp Deity. Very, very cool synergy with this deck. This is one of those cards where when it first came out, we were like, okay, interesting card, fun and Eldritch, okay. But then when we really saw um, this archetype get revealed, I went, Konami knew what they were doing. So this card, um, you can special summon it as a normal monster during the main phase, and uh, when you do, you can also t uh, negate the effects of face-up cards your opponent controls up to the number of other continuous traps you control until the end of this turn. So this is just a non-targeting, negate any face-up card, spell, spell or trap that's resolving, or still like active in the chain, uh, or monster, uh, and your whole archetype turns your monsters into continuous traps. You end your turn going first with at least two continuous trap setup so um, that makes this card very very live all of the time i don't even think it's that bad going second either and low-key interesting thing about this card it's a level six so normally the deck only synchro summons eights and twelves by itself but because we have a six in the deck it actually allows us to take advantage of a couple of level 10 synchros as well which is very very cool uh, into the and the rest is all defensive cards. This is kind of what the, the current format messes around with. This could totally be different depending on what the format looks like by the time this comes out. So don't read too much into this, but just keep in mind in terms of like the pure build of this deck, I've got 18 slots of cards that can just be whatever defensive cards you want. That makes this deck insanely powerful in my opinion. So the Ashes, the Veilers, the Drolls, the Nibs, the Imperms, the, the Books, I think they're all very good in their own right. Um, but you have 18 slots to mess around with whatever you want if you're playing the pure build. So keep an eye on that. Into the extra deck, we've got our Centurion Legatia. This is your in archetype card. This card on summon draws you a card and then destroys uh, the monster your opponent controls with the highest attack. That is, um, that is non-targeting, which is kind of nice. Um, and then on end phase, it places any Centurion monster in your grave into your spell and trap zone as a continuous trap. So good on follow-up, good on guaranteeing you that. It's also huge. This is one of the like low-key parts of this deck, that the fact that you go first and like you just summon this guy going first, and he doesn't really do much on the opponent's turn, at least that copy. You could summon another one to pop a card on the opponent's turn. And that's low-key one of the better things the deck can do, because you can, you can summon him on the opponent's turn to pop a card and draw. And look, I have 12 hand traps that like immediately on draw threaten the opponent, which is really cool. Um, and then he's just a 3,500 body. So next turn you have 30, bare minimum, 3,500 damage plus whatever you summoned on your opponent's turn that lived through. You've got a lot of damage. Uh, so this deck can actually kind of turn around and kill somewhat easily. So put respect on that. Uh, one copy of Geomathic Final Sigma. You can make this on your turn. You can make this on your opponent's turn. It is just a Towers. Summon it into the EMZ and you have summoned a 3K Towers. I feel like there are just matchups out there where if you plop this, the game is just over. And they may not be ready for it, but as long as you play it as a one of in your extra deck and you run into Sky Strikers as a rogue deck, like one of those kind of decks, like you can just cook them just by plopping this card. So just keep an eye on it. Uh, one, Dra oh, sorry. Actually, you know what? Let me move. We move this over because this is the other 12 I play. Despian Lulu while Lilith, really cool synergy in this deck. So first off, it's actually just a decent interruption. When any card leaves the extra deck, that means if they just your opponent just summons an extra deck monster or you, you can make all monsters you control gain 500, then negate the effects of one face-up card on the field until the end of the turn. Non-targeting, kind of cool. So a good just little negate card. And then during the end phase of this card is in the graveyard because it was sent there this turn, you can special summon a light spellcaster monster from hand hand or deck whose attack equals its own defense look at this spellcaster 1600 attack 1600 defense you can just summon primera straight out of the deck that's actually low-key kind of crazy there's other funny stuff too where this card comes up if you play against a deck that plays um the dogmatica maximus that makes you send cards from your extra deck and you're just able to send lulu while lilith boom you're just getting your engine started on the opponent's turn by getting primera uh in rotation which is really cool um, Draco Berserker, the 10U, pretty good interruption. One of the better eights you can take advantage of the, in the deck. Cyber Slash Harpy Lady, I think this card's a staple because this card has an effect where, uh, quick effect, uh, when a spell or trap card is, uh, spell or trap card or effect is activated, target a monster your opponent controls, bounce it. Uh, and so because you're, this deck just puts these in the spell and trap zone and then they quick effect summon out on the opponent's turn, 
turn after turn, if you just leave Cyber Slash Harpy Lady up in a grind game, every time you use one of their effects to summon from Spell and Trap Zone, you can chain this card to just straight up bounce one of your opponent's monsters. Turn after turn after turn. I think that's a staple to me. Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend. I wanted an offensive option that kind of can just clear a board really easily. This definitely fits the bill for me for an 8. Um, really threatening card. It can definitely just clear a board no TK at certain instances. Really, really strong card. Then for some 10s, I only play two, Ruddy Rose and Baron de Fleur. Uh, these only really come up with Apophis in this list, but because you have room, because there's not a ton of amazing 8s and 12s that are super generic and apply to this deck, these guys find room for sure when you can, especially Ruddy being able to make it on the... Because you're, you're usually making these on the opponent's turn because you're like flipping Apophis to negate something on the opponent's turn. Then you're quick syncing with Primera and Apophis into one of these. So for either an Omni Negate, generically good, especially after already negating something with Apophis, into, uh, you know, for that, or just wiping the entire graveyard so certain matchups you can just absolutely decimate with Ruddy Rose, and so you have to respect that as well. And the last card is, uh, last package is really interesting. It's a five card package. It's all based around this guy, Zora, the Magistus Conflagrant Calamity. When this card is Synchro Summoned, it goes ahead and equips itself with any Magistus Extra Deck monster in your extra, and then it's a skill drain for whatever type is equipped to him. So Synchro, Fusion, Link, or Exceed. I have one of each in here just in case, no matter what matchup you run into, you can kind of skill drain any of them. But this card's pretty outable because he's only a skill drain while he's equipped with that type of card. So back removal outs it, monster removal outs it, monster negation outs it. It's pretty easily outable, but you do get some also nice utility off of some of these cards as well. Like the fusion gives him an extra thousand. The synchro helps him like destroy something as soon as he like uh, battles an opponent's monster. Um, Artemis doesn't really do anything because we don't play any Magistus monsters in the main. But uh, Nina Ruru is also just an MST, so Papa back row, really really solid. Um, so there's my main deck and my, and my extra deck. One real quick thing I want to go over is the side real quick. Just some other options to look into. There's one more trap. I think I play every single card in the extra deck, ex or in the, in the archetype for Centurion, except for Phalanx. It's a decent, like, Farfa-esque interruption. It doesn't even require you to have something in your spell and trap zone. There's no requirement here, so this is live, even if you draw it by itself. But it just seemed a little bit too weak to actually want. You could, if it's really good in the format, then like mess with it for sure. But to me, I just felt like the counter trap was better overall. Uh, I've seen a lot of people messing with Horus early on with this archetype because this engine discards generally just through the standard combo using uh, your field spell. So pitching the Horuses to get them out of hand so that way they can just summon themselves back really easily is pretty nice. They're pretty good discard fodder. So it's an engine that makes sense. Plus they're eights. So like one of them plus Primera is a 12. So there's synergy there as well. Plus Emmett and Trudea can jump out as eights as well. So they can combine with these eights to make a, a rank eight as well. That's definitely something people are messing with early on. Dia Bellstar is more of an OCG thing because they use the fire, the spell that summons any level one fire from deck uh, to summon Jet Synchron, and then you go ahead and take a Jet Synchron plus Dia Bellstar into, they still have Dark Ruler, uh, or sorry, um, not Dark Ruler, what's what's his name? The, the, the Chaos Ruler uh, to make him, and then he digs you for a light or a dark, Premier is a light, True Day is a dark. Uh, and then like if you play Horus, the Horuses are dark. So like there's like a good amount of stuff you can find there and then just mill the rest. And then Jet Synchron comes back by pitching a card to go ahead and make um, the Hot Red Dragon Archfiend for an extra negate. It's pretty good, um, but because we don't have dark, uh, a Chaos Ruler, it doesn't really make a ton of sense in this deck just yet, but I am anticipating this deck to get its own uh, Synchro 8 in the future, so maybe if we get a good generic Synchro 8 where like this engine makes more sense, we could look at that, but until then, it doesn't make sense yet. Elvish is good. Again, another engine where like the discard makes sense. It has extra synergy with Apophis, the Swamp Deity. They also offer you some fives, I believe, level-wise. So it also unlocks like the ability to make nines on the opponent's turn, uh, which is kind of cool. And just has that super grindy ability. So with like a 10-card Elvish engine, you could like slap that in on top of this deck and then still have like 
whatever, 12 to 15 like random slots to mess with. There's definitely still a little bit of space there. It's kind of cool. And then some extra op options. Chenging's cool, but this deck doesn't banish on its own super easily, so it doesn't like trigger him via its own engine, so I don't think it makes a ton of sense. And then this stuff, uh, I'm just expecting either Calamity or Crimson Dragon to be banned by the time we get this support. Plus, even if it is legal, I don't plan on playing it because I think that stuff is super lame. It's just not the way I want to play the deck, even if it's the best way to play it. But yeah, this deck is really, really cool. It does everything it does under nib, through Droll, so not a huge issue on either of those ends. The high ceiling hand traps of the format. Board breakers can be a problem, especially stuff like Cosmic Cyclone um, or Evenly Match or some of those like uh, uh, back row clearing cards that kind of can fire immediately can be kind of annoying for sure. Um, but the whole thing about this deck is that it grinds so well. That's just what it does. It just grinds insanely well. So you don't always have to have five interruptions for your opponent. As long as you have one or two hand traps on top of you know, the, the one or two interruptions you're getting off your engine, it's enough to keep your opponent at bay and you're just going to stockpile resources on the turns to come and run away with the duel. That's how the deck works. That's how the pure version is supposed to run, or at least the one I've designed here. I hope that comes across to you making a lot of sense, but that's just it for me here today. Thank you so much for watching as always, guys. Um, let me know your thoughts down below on this list. I know we're still super early. We haven't even seen many results from the OCG yet on this, but I really am curious to see where they go with it. I've seen a lot of people messing around with these extra engines. I do worry that that's just kind of going to water the deck down and make it a little bit weaker to the, the nibs of the world and, and stuff like that. But, um, you know, we'll see where they end up. But I'm very, very curious. I'm very excited for this deck. Let me know your thoughts down below on this list, what you might adjust for a pure version. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below on that. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.